So in this video, I want to talk about B cell activation, the formation of germinal centers and the production of plasma cells and memory cells. So what I've drawn here is a lymph node. And here you're going to find the naive B cells in so-called follicles because they always want to be close together. We're going to pose there is an infection going on, so antigen is delivered via the afferent lymphatic into the lymph node. So here you can see a naive B cell, and eventually a naive B cell is going to recognize the antigen via its B cell receptors. So the binding of the antigen to multiple BCRs is going to be signal 1, and this is going to start activate the B cell and start energy. The consequence of this signal 1 is that the antigen is going to be taken up endocytosed and then it's going to be showing up on MHC class 2 molecules. The B cell knows only if it presents its antigen on MHC class 2, it has a chance to get T helper help. And the B cell needs T helper help to get signal 2. So remember, the T helper cell is our arrogant cell. This is not going to move to the B cell area to help activating the B cells. No, the B cell needs now to move to the paracortex to get T helper help. So once the B cell has found a T helper cell that is going to recognize the peptide via its T cell receptor, it's able to get signal 2. And signal 2 is the interaction between two proteins, CD40 and CD40 ligand. And remember, we're always going to have a set of different T helper cells, however, the most likely T helper cell that's going to give a B cell signal 2 is a T helper 2 cell. So signal 3 is now just that the T helper cell also does a little bit of a job. It starts talking and it produces cytokines, mainly IL-4 and IL-5. So once the B cell has received these three signals, it's going to differentiate and proliferate into so-called plasma blasts. So these are the B cells that have IgM on their surface and also going to already start spitting antibodies. That's a major job of B cells. And the plasma plasts only make IgM antibodies. So these are these pentamers. And once they are going to be produced, they can leave via the efferent lymphatic, go via the thoracic duct into the blood and can help clear the infection. Although the IgM antibody can do some useful stuff like complement activation, it's not a very good antibody, has not a very high affinity. And so we want to make some more higher affinity antibodies and also some more fancy antibodies, some other isotypes in order to fight the infection. So as in real life, there are always going to be some lucky guys, and those lucky guys are able to do some fancy stuff. So we're just going to pose those are our lucky guys. These are the ones that can do now some more stuff, that can maturate, differentiate, and can do some better stuff with their antibodies. And the remaining ones are going to just work for their life and keep on spitting antibodies the IgM type. So those lucky guys are going to be now irritated to the fancy party. So what they are going to do, they are going to form a germinal center. A germinal center, which I have abbreviated here with GZ, is the site where mature B cells proliferate, differentiate, and mutate their antibody genes. So what is very important to realize, once these lucky guys became germinal center B cells to do some fancy stuff and to hang out at this fancy party, they need to be provided some food from time to time because otherwise they're just going to commit suicide and die by apoptosis. So who is going to provide them the food? The food is provided by the T follicular helper cell in the form of CD40 ligand. So to make sure that there is food provided in the form of CD40 ligand at this party, the plasma plasts actually invite the T follicular helper cell to join the party. The T friendly helper cells are going to go with them to provide the survival signal. 
germinal center B cell knows in order to get the CD4 deleted sur survival signal, it needs to present antigen via MHC class 2, be recognized by the T follicular helper cell, and then these pr this protein-protein interaction can take place. So we have to realize, in order to present something via MHC class 2, antigen needs to be around. Antigen needs to be recognized via the B cell receptor and then can present it via MHC class 2 to get this CD40, CD40 ligand interaction. So the important concept here is that if antigen is not anymore there, so let's say this infection has been already cleared, then it cannot be presented and you're not going to get this survival signal. And that totally makes sense because you don't want to make even better B cells with better uh, antibodies if the infection is already cleared. There's no point to do this. And if you don't get this survival signal, the germinal center B cell is just going to die off by apoptosis. So once the B cell receives the survival signal, and from CD40 ligand, it starts to proliferate. And at the same time, as the B cell is proliferating, there are two changes in the antibody genes. The one is called somatic hypermutation, abbreviated with SHM, and the other thing that happens is at the same time class switch recombination. So let's talk first about what happens during somatic hypermutation. So somatic hypermutation is a single base pair change in the variable region in light and heavy chain of the antibody that results in a change in affinity for the antigen. So obviously, if you make these changes in your light and heavy chain, the affinity can either go up or down. So that only the ones that bind with high affinity to the antigen, they're gonna bind faster and stronger and are gonna get the food in form of CD40 ligands quicker. So you can think about it like throwing a piece of meat in a cage of lions. Only the strongest one that can bind it with high affinity is going to the one that's going to survive. The other process that is going on at the same time is the class switch recombination. And here you recombine the constant domain of the heavy chain to move a new isotype region next to the variable domain. And this changes the isotype of the antibody. Well, you might now ask, why do I even need to class switch? Well, IgM is a huge molecule. It doesn't get into a lot of places. And then the only thing that is really good in is complement activation, but it's not good for neutralization or opsonization. So the question is always, which is the pathogen that invaded us? where is the pathogen and what needs to be done. And if that has been determined, we can use the antibody that is most efficient in removing this pathogen. And that might not be IgM, that might be IgA, IgE, or IgG. And that's why we need to class switch. So the results of all these processes is two sets of mature B cells, memory cells and plasma cells. So let's move back to the big picture. We have now discussed all these processes that started from the activation of the B cell, the differentiation and maturation, and finally we have now produced two sets of mature B cells, the memory cells and the plasma cells. So what is it all good for? I want to give the memory cells the slogan, live long and wait, because after all this trouble that we went through, all this activation, maturation, differentiation processes, and we have now created a very good antibody, we don't want these cells to die off immediately. We want to have them hanging around for a long time, because after all, this invader could threaten us again. And this time we want to be ready and use the resources that we have already generated. The other population that we generated are the plasma cells. And the plasma cells are antibody factories. They make us, they secrete the antibody right now. So I want to give you the slogan, live now and spit, because that's all they 
going to do. They're going to provide us now with the antibody. And depending where the infection is, we are going to have a specific antibody produced. So let's just suppose we are here in a non-mucosal lymph node. So we would expect most of these antibodies to be IgG. So if you are in a non-mucosal site, then the antibody would need to be spit in the blood. And this seems to be most efficiently done if the plasma cell just moves into the bone marrow and secretes the antibody from there directly into the blood. The antibody will then exert its normal effector function like opsonization, neutralization and complement activation. This concludes the video on the activation, differentiation and maturation of B-cells.